we could have big problems when it comes to viewing the upcoming April 8th total solar eclipse. Weather looks to play a significant role. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. As promised, here is the weather update for the April 8th eclipse. I'm going to give you the 3D timeline with the cloud forecast overlaid on it in totality. So if you're planning on traveling to one of those cities, we're going to talk about where you may want to start altering your plans or at least thinking about it. Then we're going to talk a lot about the Devil Comet. Will it be visible during the eclipse? It's out there, but can you see it? We're going to break that down. And then at the end of the video, stick around for this. I've had a lot of comments on why does this eclipse travel from southwest to northeast if the sun rises in the east and sets in the west? We're going to talk about that. Also clear up some misinformation when it comes to viewing this eclipse. So that'll be at the end of the video. Before we get into it, if you want to stay updated on all things weather and sometimes astronomy when we have these big events, Hit that subscribe button for me. Post in the comments where you are going to be tuning in and watching the eclipse on April 8th. All right. Here is the wide view. Path of totality coming up through Mexico, exiting into Canada. And again, we're going to have that 3D path that includes Canada coming up as well in a, just a few minutes. But I want to show you the broad view here. And we are going to have significant problems if you're planning on viewing this eclipse in Texas, in southeast Oklahoma, and in Arkansas. It's a little dicey in Missouri and southern Illinois, but we're going to flip climatology on its head. And the best place to see the eclipse, weather-wise anyway, looks to be from central Indiana into Ohio, into parts of Pennsylvania. We could have some clouds around Buffalo, but then also upstate New York, into Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, and then southern New Brunswick. We've completely flipped the switch. Again, the Big time concern I have. A lot of people planning on traveling to Texas and we could be locked in the clouds. So here we go with the 3D view and I have more pause points on this for more of the towns in here if you're traveling to totality. So I wanted to show you that wide shot. Now we're going to get into it. This is 127 Central Daylight Time. This is going to be local. You'll see the time zones change as the shadow of the moon here as the overlay goes through. This is not good news for Texas. Okay, so here we go into Uvalde, into Campwood, into Utopia. As we get this started, look at all the white on your screen. And again, this milky color here, this is all the clouds right on through here. So again, San Antonio, if the skies were clear, you'd have to get on the north side of town. That's where totality is. Again, you can't be on the south side of town for this because 99% is not going to cut it. You need to be 100% totality. Austin, we are in it, but look at the white on the screen. Maybe a few breaks toward Adamsville, but still, it's going to be locked in the cloud cover. Waco, prime position to see the eclipse, but look at the cloud cover forecast. And again, we're going to have an update on this coming up on Friday, just a few days away. There's still an opportunity for things to change, but man, it has looked like clouds are going to be in Texas for the last four or five days now. I've been watching this forecast closely, been watching the trends closely. Fort Worth, Dallas, into Tyler, we had the clouds. All right, so you see where that gray shows up in southeast Oklahoma into Bethel. That gives us a slightly better chance for some breaks in the clouds anyway, but still would not risk it. Into Arkansas, Hot Springs, Little Rock, Conway, that white color is still there. Jonesboro into Poplar Bluff, Missouri, into Alton, Missouri. Zion, Missouri. Not good news. All right. So we have some gray starting to pop up now as we get out of Missouri, head into southern Illinois and into Paducah. It's still not the best, but it's better. And again, we're looking for these little gray blotches. That's where the skies are trying to clear out. Evansville, we have clouds around, though, so it's still not the best. But look, Terre Haute into Bloomington. Indianapolis you see that white go away and again the white represents the cloud cover so Cincinnati we're outside of totality anyway but that's where we have the clouds Oxford Muncie there's a few scattered clouds around but Indianapolis Greencastle Lebanon we're looking much much better anyway Springfield Ohio Dayton Ohio we're looking okay and Toledo Ohio we're looking okay Cleveland a few scattered clouds around same for Akron but we're doing pretty good into Erie with some of the lake effect clouds, we might have some obstructions around. But further down the line, further down Lake Erie into Ashtabula, uh, closer to Cleveland, we're looking really nice. Buffalo, it does look like clouds are going to be there. Rochester, Syracuse, we're looking pretty good. Watertown, looking also pretty good. And then 
possibly the best place to see this eclipse weather-wise is going to be in, up, in uh, upstate New York into northern Vermont. Burlington looks fantastic right now. Uh, getting into New Hampshire, Newport, into parts of Quebec, into Maine. We're getting into Maine now. This is uh, 3.32 in the afternoon, Eastern Daylight Time. Again, all of these times that we are rolling through our local time. Presque Isle, looking fantastic. Stanley in the New Brunswick, awesome. We have some extra clouds, though, coming through uh, into northern New Brunswick, into Bathurst, into Miramichi. That's where the thicker cloud cover is going to be. This continues into out of New, Brun New Brunswick toward Prince Edward Island. There's some clouds around, but some breaks in those clouds. And then Newfoundland, the eclipse continues into 512 local time, but we are locked in the cloud cover uh, for us into Newfoundland. There you go at 514. It looks to be cloudy, but there is the path of totality. I mentioned earlier that we're flipping climatology on its head. Look at this. So these colors represent where we typically had the clouds on April 8th, the percentage of average the percentage of average cloud cover. And you see up in the Great Lakes region in the northeast, that is 70% of the time we have clouds. That looks to be where we could have the clearest skies as of Monday, April 1st. This is when we showed you. This is the recording of this video. We're going to have another one in five days to see if there's an update here uh, if, if we start to trend away from that storm system. But look down here where we have the yellows and the pinks popping up. That's where we have 40 to 50% of the time we have clouds. So much better chance, climatologically speaking. But again, I just showed you that we're going to have some big time problems. So I don't want to say alter your travel plans just yet, but just know if you are watching this or planning to watch this from the path of totality in Texas, Southeast Oklahoma, Arkansas, Southeast Missouri, and Southern Illinois, you might want to think about having some sort of backup plan. If this eclipse means a lot to you and you want to see this thing, because I do think there is a really high chance that we have for clouds to block the view. All right, Comet Ponds Brooks, also known as the Devil Comet. No, the world is not going to end. I promise you that's not why this is called the Devil Comet. It's emitting of the gas looks like Devil Horns or the Millennium Falcon if you're a Star Wars fan. If you're going to try to look for this, and Comet Ponds Brooks, a.k.a. the Devil Comet, is still not, is still not readily seen by the naked eye. It has not gone through one of its bursts that... It, it typically does go through one of the... It, that's its MO of this comet. It has these uncharacteristic and really unforecastable bursts of brightness, if you will, that it emits a little more gas. It still has not done that. There's obviously still some time for that to happen. But if you do have binoculars or a telescope and you want to look for this comet, it's going to be to the upper and left side of your screen there, and it's going to be to the west of the eclipse. Look for Jupiter. It's going to be visible in totality when the sky is almost dark and you'll be able to see Jupiter clearly there and then point your telescope just down and to the right of Jupiter or your binoculars and you will be able to see the Devil Comet there. There's also going to be Venus, Saturn, and Mars to the bottom of the eclipse. I think this is one of the coolest things to do during, the total, uh, during a total solar eclipse. When it gets almost dark, it doesn't get completely dark, but when it gets that way... To see the planets. I know you can see them in the middle of the night as well when night falls, but I think it's just something cool about that when also the crickets stop and, and you hear the birds stop chirping because they think it's actually night. So some other things to look for, a little bonus thing in totality, of course, we talked about the bright planets and the comet that is light, that is in the sky, but you still can't see it without binoculars or a telescope just yet. The sun's corona, that's the selling point of a total solar eclipse when the moon completely blocks the sun and you can see the corona something to look for as we are heading into solar maximum there could also be some gnarly solar flares and some coronal mass ejections during totality we only have a few minutes for this to happen but you might be able to see them kind of burst out of the sun as the moon is blocking it so that could be really cool there's also an effect known as shadow bands on the ground they look like these wavy little lines on the ground they don't happen everywhere it's a phenomenon that's still being studied it's kind of as it's going through some of the crescents of the moon and coming through in the atmosphere kind of bend some things so it doesn't happen everywhere along the path of totality but if you see some weird things happening on the ground that's what is going on there uh the shadow band uh, moving through all right 
during the last video. And thank you guys for watching and subscribing and all that stuff. It's been great talking to you guys about uh, the eclipse. I had a lot of questions. Wait a minute. How does this happen if the sun rises in the east and sets in the west? How do we have a path of totality from west to east and also coming up from the south? It is a good question. I want to remind everybody, though, that it's not the sun that is actually traveling from south to east. It is the moon's shadow that's being projected on the earth. So here's the deal, and here's how you can visualize this. I know it's kind of hard to conceptualize. Believe me, I know. The earth is rotating from west to east, okay? It's, and this, the moon also rotates around the earth from west to east. So think of it like this, and that's the second line on the slide. Just think of your point kind of rolling from west to east to greet the sun. And that is why the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. It's kind of hard to tell from our perspective, but an eclipse maximizes that west to east motion because, again, you see the shadow of the moon being projected onto the earth. The other thing to note here, the moon does not orbit the earth on a flat plane. It's tilted by about five degrees. So as the shadow is moving from west to east, we happen to be catching it this time the moon's shadow as it's kind of in its ecliptic plane there and it's about five degrees tilted so that is why it's also rising up from mexico and going from southwest to northeast in 2045 it's coming in from the west and then kind of diving down through central florida so it's coming across the southern tier of the country that's the next big total solar eclipse coming up so a lot of things to a lot of different things there and that is because the Earth, the Earth's orbit around the sun is from—the Earth rotates, I should say, from west to east, same as the moon. And then you also have that five-degree tilt of the moon's orbit around the Earth. All right, so some misinformation. You can look at the eclipse without glasses only in totality, only when completely the, the moon completely covers the sun. You can remove those approved solar eclipse glasses. Anytime there's a it's not completely covered or you're looking at the sun in general, you need to have the specialized glasses. You can use welder's helmets. NASA recommends 13 glass or higher. You can also make one of those projection screens that you project the shadow either by using a couple of pieces of paper, poking a hole through it or cardboard and projecting it onto the ground or making one of those DIY viewers where it shows that projects the shadow. You can use a cereal box or a shoe box. Really easy to make. In the previous video, I showed you how to make that. I'll put that at the end card again if you want to check that out as well. But please, please, please do not look at the sun without approved protection make sure you know where you're getting your glasses from people have had their eyes damaged by using fake glasses because there are bad people out there that just want to capitalize on something that is really really cool to see so please make sure you're paying attention on all fronts yes the the sun will damage your eyes if you look at it for a long period of time please the only time you can look you can look at the eclipse i want to be clear about that you have to take off your glasses to see totality because it's just going to be too dark only in totality and only for those few minutes in totality can you remove those glasses at any other point during the partial eclipse or on just a regular sunny day you need to have some sort of approved protection or else your eyes run the risk of being damaged that damage may not show up right away it might be years down the line but then you'll end up seeing the eclipse uh, projected on your eyes it's uh it's not fun several people in 2017 i'm sure they're more than several people um damaged their eyes because they looked at the eclipse. Alrighty, guys. I hate to be the bearer of bad news about the cloud cover. Things can just still change, but it has looked like these clouds are going to be locked in on the southern half of the path of totality for a while now. Keep your fingers crossed. Again, I don't want to say alter your plans just yet, but keep a close eye, and if you can, Maine, Vermont, upstate New York, northern Ohio, right now anyway, as of April 1st, that looks to be your best bet to see totality and to see the total solar eclipse in all of its glory. We'll have an update coming up in five days, the weekend before the weekend before the total solar eclipse. Again, that is April 8th. We'll have the update before then to see if anything has changed. We're watching it closely. Again, post in the comments where you're tuning in from. If you found this content helpful, hit that thumbs up button for me, and we will catch you next time.